In this video, we're gonna be looking at isotopes. It's not too complicated, okay? So what an isotope is, is the same type of atom, but it has a different number of neutrons, okay? So remember that types of atom are determined by number of protons, okay? So it's going to have the same number of protons, but it's going to have a different number of neutrons, which means it's also gonna have a different mass, right? Because my mass is my protons plus my neutrons. So if it has the same number of protons, because it's the same type of atom, but a different number of neutrons, it's gonna have a different mass. Let's just look at examples because <laughs> that might be confusing conceptually, okay? So if we looked at silicon, example, okay? Silicon is SI on your periodic table, okay? And right here, right? Silicon has to have 14 protons. Its atomic number is 14. So no matter what, for any type of silicon I have, I'm going to have 14 protons, no matter what, okay? But I have multiple different isotopes of silicon, meaning I have different amounts of mass for these different types of silicon. So I can have silicon 28, silicon 29, 29 ooh, okay, and silicon 30, all right? So I have three different isotopes, three different masses, okay? So I could write that as my... Um, you know, complete elemental symbol. So SI with a 28 up top, SI with a 29 up top, or SI with a 30 up top. It's just showing me my different masses, right? But no matter what, each one of these silicons has to still have 14 as its number of protons, right? That's what identifies silicon as the silicon atom is that it has 14 protons. Okay, so what is the only difference between these silicons is they have to have a different number of neutrons. Okay, mass is equal to protons plus neutrons. So I know right here for this example, example number one, I'm going to have 28 of my mass is equal to 14 protons plus my number of neutrons. Right, so minus 14. Move that up a little bit. And I should get, in this case, 14 neutrons for silicon 28, okay? Versus, in my silicon 29, okay, I'm going to have 29 as my mass number equals number of protons, 14, plus my number of neutrons. Again, minus 14. And I get that this isotope of silicon has 15 neutrons. We get the idea. This is going to be 30 of my mass number equals 14 protons plus a number of neutrons. Okay, so this silicon has 16 neutrons. Okay, so all of these three different isotopes, they're all still silicon, right? Every single one still has 14 protons, but each one has a different number of neutrons. And having a different number of neutrons changes the mass number, right? So 14 neutrons gives me 28 mass, 15 neutrons, 29 mass, 16 neutrons, 30 mass. So the only thing that an isotope does is it changes the number of neutrons, which in turn changes your mass number, okay? All right, why do I care? <laughs> okay, first of all, just for chemistry calculations, we definitely need to understand isotopes for calculating different masses and all that good stuff. But because you're taking chem going into the medical field, there are a whole bunch of different uh, cancer treatments that use specific isotopes as radiation. Uh, the most commonly used one that I know of is radioiodine, which is iodine-131, okay? So iodine-131 or I-131, like this. That's how we would write it, okay? And this works with thyroid cancer really amazingly well. Okay, so this specific isotope of iodine that has a mass of 131, 
All right, so you can go through. Actually, why don't we do that right now? Okay, iodine right here has a atomic number of 53. So I know for this one, 131 equals 53 plus my number of neutrons. So minus 53, okay, and I get 78 neutrons, all right? So the specific iodine that has exactly 78 neutrons gives me a mass of 131, and this specific iodine is radioactive, okay, radioiodine, which means it breaks down in a very specific way, okay? We will talk more about radioactivity and stuff when we get to nuclear chem, which is chapter 11, super fascinating, okay? And it's really helpful, really useful when we talk about cancer treatments. So this specific iodine, iodine-131, will go to your thyroid, okay? It, it like collects in your thyroid and then the radiation from iodine-131 will actually destroy the cells that are in your thyroid, including the cancer cells for thyroid cancer, which is pretty incredible, right? Yay, modern medicine, that's pretty amazing. And that's all just because people were able to figure out how this specific isotope of iodine breaks down, okay? How amazing, right? So if I had iodine-130 with only 77 neutrons, doesn't help. Not helpful with cancer at all, okay? But specifically iodine-131 is helpful and it can literally save people's lives. Got so excited I smashed the camera there, okay? Um, so isotopes are important, they are relevant, and the calculations honestly aren't that difficult, okay? 